Today's topic is how to delegate nurture tasks and make meal planning easy with Bianca Osborne. Welcome to the Well Woman Show, where we interview women executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. And you're listening to the Well Woman Show, where motivated women achieve fulfillment and well being. You're listening to the Well Woman Show. Take time for myself by coming to things like Well Woman Drinks, to be accepting of myself no matter what. Step away from judgment as much as possible. You're listening to The Well Women Show. Just, you're going to be in for a good ride. I don't regret anything. Everything I've ever done, I've learned from it, one way or another, good or bad. Being a little bit selfish for yourself, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first and then give what's left. I'm a woman. I would prefer to, to tell my own story. My story, though it's very personal, is universal. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. And now your host, Giovanna Rossi. Hi, Giovanna Rossi here, and welcome to another episode of The Well Woman Show, where I interview women leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about their lives and their road to becoming and being who they are today. Are you feeling burned out or finding it hard to focus on your goals, or are you in transition? Well, you're not alone. We all need to activate our superpowers. These are the internal strengths and abilities we all already have, but don't use all the time. Superpowers can be cultivated and they include empathy, love, intuition, courage, and more. As always, this episode is brought to you by Well Woman Life, a global community of women living our best lives. Whether it's your health, relationships, your money, or making an impact in your community and the world, Well Woman Life has you covered. You've made a commitment to not settle, to use your voice, and to live your best life. Well Woman Life offers annual memberships, workshops, and retreats to support you. Check out wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join our growing community. Now back to the show. This week's episode is brought to you by the Well Woman Superpower Retreat, October 26th and 27th at Sunrise Springs in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Check out wellwomanlife.com slash retreat for more information. This is our third annual retreat. So if you've never joined us, this is the year. It's in a beautiful resort. And we have amazing speakers. Um, and the testimonials are really quite amazing. You can check those out too at the link that I gave you um, from women that have been in the past whose lives literally have been changed from attending our retreats. So uh, definitely check it out. There are um, easy flights to get now just directly to Santa Fe, or you can fly into Albuquerque. So don't let that stop you. Definitely check it out, wellwomanlife.com slash retreat. And the spaces are filling up. So if you're interested, you really need to get on it. All right. Um, I want to tell you about this new headphone that I'm using. I talked about it a little bit on the last episode, and I've had a chance to use it a little bit more. It's super comfortable. And I have to say, it looks really good too. I think I'm going to post a picture of me wearing them. Um, on the show notes. So you can go to wellwomanlife.com slash 083 show to see me wearing these headphones and also to get your discount code wellwoman15. Um, and you can go to their website. It's studio Sweden. That's S U D I O Sweden.com. And you get a, a pretty substantial discount when you use the code wellwoman15 for your new headphones. Today's topic is how to delegate nurture tasks and make meal planning easy. And hopefully by the end of the show, you'll be inspired to delegate some of those traditional nurturing tasks like cooking, shopping, and cleaning, and you'll be ready to plan and structure healthy meals for you and your family. My guest today is Bianca Osborne, a food entrepreneur and high-end private chef and nutritionist, helping busy families and professionals support themselves with delicious, healthy meals. I really loved talking to Bianca because she just is very straightforward and um, breaks things down in a simple way, and uh, it was just a real pleasure uh, talking to her. And we talk on this episode about how to structure meals for everyone's dietary needs in the family. I don't know about you, but I have lots of different things going on with, you know, what I eat and what my husband eats and what the kids eat. And she also talks about introducing new flavors and textures to children, which is really handy. 
and also how to delegate those nurture tasks without feeling guilty. And the free giveaway today is Meal Planning Made Easy. It's a cheat sheet, and you can get it at wellwomanlife.com slash 083 show. And I really like this giveaway because it's a one page, easy to like put up in the kitchen or keep in a drawer um, that gives you specific tasks to do on the weekend, on the weekday, and and then monthly tasks as well, so that you can do your meal planning really easily. Um, it's a great reference. So check that out. And before we begin, I want to let you know a, a little bit more about the Superpower Retreat, October 26th and 27th, wellwomanlife.com slash retreat. And we will be there. It's a two-day retreat. Um, we're going to have just amazing speakers, amazing food, amazing deep connections. Um, if you're interested in really moving forward in your personal life or your professional life, this is the place to get that done. It's really hard to to do those big changes when we're running our regular life, right? We need a, uh, we need to retreat. We need to take a step back, take a step out of our busy lives and just connect with other women who are also really committed to living their best lives. And, uh, reflecting and really making a plan for how you want to move forward. What are those big changes that are coming and how are you going to handle them? Uh, so definitely check it out. Wellwomanlife.com slash retreat. You can also join the conversation in the Well Woman Life community group at wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook. Now to my interview with Bianca Osborne. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's so good to have you. I love talking about food and nutrition. So, me too. Um, yeah. Made a career out of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, you did. So, Bianca, let's start with telling listeners what are you working on and how does it impact women's lives? Well, what I do daily is I go to people's homes and I prepare them food. And so, I think what I do to support women, especially because, you know, in the working world, you know, women are starting businesses, but they still have to come home generally and make dinner for their families and make sure that their families are nourished. So one of the ways that I help support women is just help supporting them in the home so that when they get home, they don't have to think about dinner, but they know that they're going to be well-fed and their families are going to be well-fed. Oh, cool. And so break down for us sort of, what does that look like? So you, you have like, how many houses do you visit every day? So, uh, sometimes it's two houses a day. Generally it's just one. Um, and so what I do is depending on the client. So some clients, they prefer to buy all their groceries and I just go in and get creative with what they've purchased. I'm really good at, you know, ad living and being off the cuff and getting creative. But in other cases, and this is the most um, frequent case, um, I spend the morning just meal planning. So all my clients, I get their allergies and their aversions of like everyone who's going to be eating the food. And then I make menus built on that. And so every day I make their menu, then I go shop for it. I usually arrive to someone's home around like 11, 1130, prepare the food and then just leave them instructions so that all they have to do is reheat and eat. I also generally clean the kitchen when I'm done too, because there's nothing better than walking home to like a fridge full of food and a clean kitchen. So Mm -hmm. that's sort of how I work. But because I'm um, a nutritionist as well, I try and marry, you know, nutrition principles, but with also deliciously healthy food at the same time. Okay. And so when you do that, um, if you can only do one or two houses a day, how do you, how do you run a business? I mean, how do you scale that? Or do you charge or is your pricing, you know, really high because you can only do a certain amount of clients? Well, on the side, I actually coach other young chefs and nutritionists who want to start their own private chef businesses as well. Mm -hmm. It's a scalable business in that you can take on more um, help. So I could get an assistant and I probably am going to need to get an assistant right away here. And then I can do two houses or three houses. But as you know, the demand increases, so does the price Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. But um, the thing with 
this kind of business is that there's just so much uh, need for it and people don't know that they need it until they get it and then they're like, I can't live without this. And so that's what I try and stress to a lot of like my um, coaching clients is that there's this is just such a new thing that people are starting to do, really starting to delegate home duties. And so the more people that can step in and help people with that, the more in demand that their service is going to be. So, I mean, it's not scalable in terms of there's only one of me, but Mm -hmm. it's scalable in that it can become a bigger business in that I grow other chefs underneath me. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I know know there are lots of options now for for meal planning and dinners and things. And I I know people who do the food boxes and the different baskets and, you know, fresh food arrives at your door and then you just have to cook it. Do you support um, your clients to cook their own meals or are you really just cooking it all? Cooking it all? So I really, I do, if they're private chef clients, I just go and I cook it, but I also do cooking classes as well. Private classes. I do group classes. I actually just had a class yesterday. And so that's where I go in and actually show them. We make a meal plan. I show them how to make a few recipes from that meal plan. And then they can go forward and do it for themselves. And what I like about that is that it empowers people to be doing it for themselves and to see that it doesn't have to be super complicated, like Gordon Ramsay meals. It can be delicious. It can be impressive, but it can also be easy at the same time. Mm. Okay. So can you give us an example? Like say I was your client and, um, you know, I'll give you some examples of like what my family would, would need to eat. And then can you give me an example of what you would do? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's do it. So I am gluten free and dairy free. And my husband is um, no sugar and and no dairy. And then we have one child who's very picky and then one child who's a very adventurous eater, but tends to copy her brother. (laughs) So (laughs) it's a challenge. So what would you do with us? I mean, we're we're difficult. Well, you're not actually that difficult, but but the way that I tend to structure meals where there's, you know, dietary restrictions, so gluten-free, and then there's picky eaters, is I just, like, decompose everything, so, or decompose, deconstruct, that's Mm -hmm. the word, deconstruct everything, so I will make, you know, yesterday I actually nailed a mushroom uh, bolognese sauce that Mm -hmm. tastes like it has cheese in it, tastes like it has meat in it, it doesn't, and so I would make a sauce like that, and then I would also make sides, so I would make a meaty side with some more adventurous flavors, so someone could add that to the sauce, I would make Mm -hmm. a gluten-free pasta, which are so easy to come by, Um, I would make a vegetable on the side as well, so it wouldn't be so much about accommodating everything in one meal, but accommodating everyone so that they can mix and match their own meals based on how they're feeling that day. And And I, for a lot of families with kids, and I know that it can go either way. So some days they're like, I love this. Mm -hmm. Other days I don't like this. So I think that's the best organization of meals for families. Well, I love that because that means that you're all sitting down together eating more or less the same thing, even though, you know, like I might add this or that, and you might add something, but more or less we're all eating the same thing, which is what we strive for. We, I really don't like the idea of, and we don't like make, you know, two or three different meals. Yeah. Like that's just, that just wouldn't work. <laughs> so I, I like that you, you know, basically would kind of make one main thing or the main idea and then people would add things. Well, and I think that you also, um, you just create a nightmare for yourself down the line. If you from the outset are just making two meals, you know, one meal for you and your husband and then another meal for your kids, because then they think that's how it works, (laughs) but that isn't really how it should work because as a family, you want to be able to sit down and have the energy to talk about your day, to eat the meal and not feel rushed or pressed or fighting over eating this or not eating that. It just, I, in, you know, what I like to say is I just like take that one thing off of people's plates. Mm, yeah, I like it. And as you said before, there's a real move to delegating more of those home tasks that um, traditionally women would do or the caretaker would do. And oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I, th- what has been your experience of that? I mean, I see women struggling to to delegate those tasks because there's sort of this guilt of like, well, I should be doing that. Like I'm the mom, like I should be cooking and I should be doing this and that and everything. And then they, 
you know, get burned out and frizzle and um, they can't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I get a lot of people. So I do a lot of my, um, promotion like via Facebook. So in Facebook groups and things like that. And a lot of people will say, Oh, I screenshotted it and I didn't know if I needed it. And then one day it was just so crazy. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. And that's when they, you know, brought in help. And it's the same thing as you, you know, I mean, how many of us know how to change our oil? We go and we get someone to change our oil. If we, Mm -hmm. don't our car breaks down, but it's like the same in your house. It's like so many things can fall off personally, even professionally when things don't feel sorted at home. So, and you have to eat. The thing is, is you have to eat. You ideally want to eat healthy food because not eating healthy food has its own set of downward spirals. And it's like, if you can't do it for yourself, get help. I mean, there's no shame in getting help. And I even say to clients, I'm like, you can pretend that you made this if you have guests over, but at least you have food in the fridge. Because again, it's just one less thing that you have to think about. And women are so overloaded. We work these crazy jobs, you know, we're running households, we're running businesses, but then there's still that whole, uh, motherhood homemaking Mm -hmm. piece that hasn't been sort of shared necessarily with the male gender quite yet. Not saying that some men don't step up, but I mean, there's just, gender roles that play a role. And so, you know, women think about these things all the time, but I honestly say it's it's one less thing for you to think about. And if someone's going to judge you for bringing in help to nourish your family, I mean, they're probably just jealous. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So we're declaring here right now on the well woman show that it's okay to delegate home uh, and, and sort of care nurturing tasks. Like, of course, yeah. Like, um, the shopping, like what about the shopping and, and the cleaning and all of those things that just, we can't take, we can't do it all. Well, and that's, you know, and I think that's where uh, for a lot of people that I make meal plans for, so I'll make the meal plan, I'll send them and my meal plans have the recipes. I also do a workflow. So like what to prepare on what day to sort of make things easier Mm -hmm. grocery list. There's like everything. But the thing that they'll say is I just couldn't get to the grocery store. I just didn't want to get to the grocery store, but there's all those, uh, like you can set up your life. So everything is automated. You can get groceries delivered to your front door. In fact, a lot of my clients, I set them up with online groceries. And so when I get there, it's just there and ready for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So people can do that in their own lives too. just set up the infrastructure so that it just happens automatically, you know? Yeah. And also, you know, planning, as we know, is a huge key to staying on track with your goals and uh, your nutrition and your fitness and just having a plan and putting it in your schedule and having it all um, planned out. So having that plan in advance really, you know, sounds like it would really help. Well, and even if you have someone, cause I do this for people too, where I just build them, you know, the workflow, I build them the menu, I do the groceries for them. So really it's just, it shows up mm-hmm. and they have the recipes and they just have to make them. I mean, there's obviously other services out there too. You know, there's so many, I mean, I can name like a ton off the top, but with those ones, the only thing is it's not custom. So if you're dealing with allergies, if you're dealing with like really severe aversions to things, sometimes don't, those don't really, you know, meet the brief. So what it's good about having someone who is doing something personalized is you can accommodate for all of those things. Mm. So what would you do with like a, a picky eater who really only likes, you know, pizza and spaghetti? Like how would you start expanding that out so that that child can eat other foods with the family? Well, so I think it's really that it takes time. I think a lot of people expect, you know, picky eating and then they're not picky eaters. The first thing is kids who it's like time tested and proven that kids who cook and are a part of the meal making tend to eat it more. And I am a, the reason that I do what I do is because I love food, but also because I'm super picky. I got to a point in my life where my mom was just like, Okay, you make your own food because I can't do it right. So I get where picky eaters are coming from. Oh, wow. But I know for me That's amazing. Okay. I know for me that I like if someone just put like I'm really weird about certain fruits. And if someone just puts the fruit down in front of me, I won't touch it. But if I go into the kitchen and I get it myself and I cut it myself, I'll eat it. And it's the same thing with picky eaters. Also, it's sometimes just about introducing the flavors, not necessarily like this is kale, this is this, this is that. So if they like spaghetti, put like blending it into the sauce so that they're starting to get the flavor, they're starting to get the texture of it. And then as you progress, you can start introducing it in ways that's more 
aren't visible Mm -hmm. as what it is. But sometimes you just got to start somewhere. And if you're trying to get people more um, engaged in flavors and different textures, you have to start slowly because sometimes it's just weird. You know, you're like, I'm not eating that. It's weird. (laughs) Right. Okay. And so you are based in Canada. You obviously the houses that you go and cook for are right there in your neighborhood or nearby. If someone wanted to hire you to make their meal plan and do the workflow and so that all they had to do was literally like buy what you told them to buy and then go cook it. Um, can they do that? Do you offer those kinds of services? Oh yeah, for sure. I, that's like one of my favorite things to do because it's not, I can work with anyone Mm -hmm. anywhere. Okay. And so we'll link to your website so that people can check it out um, on our show notes. But um, I wanted to uh, ask you a little bit about your background and your personal, you know, sort of how you, how you got here. And on the Well Woman Show, we really explore all of the aspects of our lives and, and where we have been in order to sort of be who we are today. So I want to ask you if you can describe a time in your life when you didn't put yourself first or you weren't taking care of yourself the way you probably now know you need to. Oh, well, I used to live in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada before I moved to Toronto and I had a brick and mortar wellness kitchen. So we did catering, um, cooking classes, prepared meals, meal plans, like anything to do with culinary wellness and starting that business. When I first started, I was like full of fire. I would work 16 hour to 20 hour days. It didn't matter. I was just so happy to be doing it, but eventually I got quite burned out and I was putting just so much time into the business. I had neglected my personal life, my family, my friends, my own health. And it's ironic because I was, you know, sitting there telling people, this is what you eat to be healthy. This is what you eat for healthy digestion and good sleep. And I was doing none of those things because it was just so overloaded. Mm -hmm. And so looking back at that time, I mean, I would just tell myself to slow down (laughs) and slow down and think because I stayed in that business longer than I probably should have in an unhappy, unfulfilled, unhealthy state, but only because I just had my head down as opposed to having the space to sort of reflect and look at it as opposed to just being in it. Mm. So, I mean, that was pretty crazy time. What was, what was the moment? Um, like, uh, like the aha moment or the moment where you were like, I can't do this anymore. Like I, I need to shift here. I actually cut the tip of my thumb off daydreaming about not being there. Oh, <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and that honestly, that was the moment where I was like, okay, cause I had been getting little, like, you know, I'm the type of person, like my intuition, it comes to me in like stomach aches and like stomach pain. Some people get, you know, a headache, a shoulder ache or whatever. And I was getting a lot of stomach aches at that time, but completely ignoring them, Mm -hmm. completely ignoring them, taking on more jobs and thinking that the more I worked, that would make the feeling go away, which is just not the right idea. And so I was in the kitchen by myself and I was very rarely alone in there. Usually I had employees and stuff, but I was there by myself. I was making a cabbage salad and I was sitting there like looking up and just being like, oh, I wish I was anywhere but here. And as I said, anywhere but here in my head, I sliced through. (sighs) It was crazy. And so when I was at the doctor's getting like sewn up, I was like, this is the universe literally like kicking me so hard in the bum saying, if you aren't going to listen, I'm going to make you listen. So Mm. I listened up. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Um, so I noticed you said something that I am very interested in, which is you said the more I worked that made Um, the more I worked, I thought that would make the feeling go away. And I think that a lot of women do that. They become almost like workaholics because, you know, they just think, oh, if I just work more, if I just do more. Can you talk a bit more about that? Well, for me, I was always a really late bloomer. And so I was always seeing, I was seeing my friends, you know, get these corporate jobs and sort of rise in the ranks. And I was just sort of, you know, building a business here and doing this and just trying to make entrepreneurship happen. Cause I've always been kind of unemployable. And so when I finally landed on something that was successful and people were, you know, praising me for having this business, I was like, wow, this is it. This is what I do. This is who I am. And I let it become a part of my identity. So it was called the vitality kitchen. And so I wasn't just Bianca, I was vitality kitchen Bianca. Mm-hmm. And so when I, even when I was having those feelings of like, 
oh, this might not be it and some dread and like not really wanting to go to work and sort of just feeling burnt by the whole thing. In my head, I was like, what else am I without this? But what I've since realized having gone through it and come out the other side is that no matter what you do as a business, the skills are still the same. It's you become a skilled person. It's not the business is you, but the skills are you. Mm -hmm. And so I think for a lot of women, they have to disassociate themselves from the business as an entity as like this, the business is not you, it's a business. And also just to realize that no matter what happens with the business, you still come out of it with all the things that you learned, all the skills that you have. And I think that for me is how I view my business now, because when I left that business, um, I went through like a period of pretty like low times where I just didn't know what I was doing with myself. I had started becoming a private chef and working with clients privately, but I still sort of felt really lost, but it wasn't until, you know, someone just said to me, it's like the business is over, but you're still here. And it was Mm -hmm. kind of like, you're right. And it, it just, it like just clicked in me. And so that's something that I tell everyone. And I have a friend who recently started a business herself, a brick and mortar business. And I said, be careful not to let this identify you because it's so much harder to get out, to backtrack, to make any decisions. If you feel that you are your business. Mm, That's so good. And that's a great segue into our, our final segment here called superpowers for success. But first a quick word from our sponsor, being a well woman includes being financially healthy. Our sponsors, Lorraine L. and Kate Stalter of Better Money Decisions, are on a mission to eliminate complexity and confusion from your financial life. They replace Wall Street jargon with straightforward talk you can understand, and they create investment and retirement plans customized for your needs and your future. Download a free copy of their latest book, Don't Let Your Money Kick the Bucket Before You Do, and learn how to avoid the biggest mistakes women make when planning for retirement. Go to bettermoneydecisions.com slash wellwoman and download your free book today. I want to ask you a few questions. The first one is, what does success in life mean to you? Success in life to me, I mean, I love money. So definitely money is a part of it. But I think money that comes from a place of doing what I love, serving people in a really authentic way, and also being able to to give back and tithe. That's something that's really important to me. And even if it's just, you know, being able to give $2 to a homeless person that asks me for it, um, I feel like that is true success, being able to be of service to other people because of the abundance that I experience. Mm, I love that. I love that you just said, I love, I love money. You know, (laughs) most people try to answer that question without talking about money. (laughs) The thing is, is I think, and this is something that I talk about with my clients too. It's like, you have to be okay with talking about money because if you aren't, people are going to undercut you. And, and it's not even in a way that like, I love money and I love it over and above everything else, but I love myself enough to know that I'm worth Mm -hmm. money. I am what my skills are worth something. And once you make that determination, I feel like that was when my business really shifted in this entity that it is in now, because if it, it costs what it costs, I'm worth what I'm worth. If you have a problem with that, I'm not your service provider. And then that's it. Yeah. I mean, I think you just touched on something that keeps coming up too in my interviews, which is that women tend to not value what comes easily to them. So totally. it's like, well, I just, you know, I'm just a great cook. Like I just know how to cook. I know food. So why would I value that? And you're saying, no, you need to really value that. Well, I have a client who is in Edmonton and she, um, makes cakes. So she's like a baker and she's freelancing. And, you know, I was saying, okay, you know, Instagram will be really great for you because it's just such a visual thing that you do. And she said, well, what am I going to talk about? I said, uh, making cakes, the (laughs) cake process. I mean, everything about cake making. She's like, well, no one really cares about that. I'm like, uh, yeah, they do. Also, it just shows the skill that goes into it. So yes, you're showing them all the steps to do it, but most people are going to look at you doing all those steps and be like, I need a cake maker. Do you know what I mean? And I think that (laughs) a lot of people, we think, to ourselves. Well, no one's going to care about that. Oh, I just know how to make really nice cakes. It's not that big of a deal, but a cake can change someone's event and from being just an event to being something that is memorable. Mm -hmm. And that's the power that we hold in our businesses. And we have to remember that. Mm, Love that. So when did you know internally inside of you, not, not like external validation, but when did you know within yourself that you were really good at what you do? Um, that's a great question. 
I don't know. I feel like it was just a shift along the same lines of the shift of, uh, you know, my business is dead, but I'm not dead kind of thing. And I just, you know, going to people's houses and people telling other people and, you know, someone saying, Oh, that was, I you know my husband never eats X thing and they love X thing. Like mm-hmm. just those little things have really started to like seep in because before when I was in my other business, I found that I was dealing with so many, like, I didn't like this or this, this didn't work out or this, that, and the other thing. And so it was just so much focus on the negative. Mm -hmm. And as I've sort of moved on, I've started to focus on the positive things. So people, things that people say are positive. And so I think that's really reinforced. Oh, wow. I am good at this Mm -hmm. and consistently having people come back. Yeah, (laughs) that helps. (laughs) Can you describe a personal habit that a daily personal habit that contributes to your well being? Um, I definitely pray in the morning just for like the day to go well. Um, just, you know, just for the day to go well, no like delays, no transit delays. I mean, I pray for everything. Um, Mm -hmm. and then also, uh, I'm an only child, so I talk to myself a lot. So I really shifted what I say to myself to just be really positive things. So like, Oh my gosh, today is beautiful. I'm so lucky that I get to walk to work. I'm so happy that this, that, or the other thing I try and just like, if I have a down, like a moment of downtime where I'm not thinking about what I'm making or talking to someone or whatever the case is to try and like imprint something positive. And that's Mm. been huge in the last year of my life. Mm. Okay. And what superpower did you discover you had only to realize it was there all the time? Um, my resilience, Mm. (laughs) my resilience for sure. I mean, I have in my time and we didn't go all the way back, but I've started a catering company and then I started my other company. I've started this company and all of those companies I've started with no money, no credit card, no anything, just like cash in hand. And looking back, I'm like, that takes a lot of resilience to sort of just be like, it's not going to work out right now. And resourcefulness too, where it's like, I don't have the money, but I need it. I'm going to find it. And so that's something that I have started to praise myself for because not everyone is resourceful. Mm. Yeah. And what advice would you give your younger self, say 15, 20 years ago? Oh my gosh. I would say you are enough as you are. You don't need to be chasing, like you don't need to be defined by money, success, clothes that you wear. It all is just about Bianca. And if I would have known that 15 years ago, I think things would have been different. I mean, it wouldn't be the journey of course, but for so long I struggled with like self-worth and just self-confidence because I always thought I needed, you know, a boyfriend. I needed to be a part of the cool group. I needed this shoes. I needed this amount of money. I needed to go on this trip. And I've since realized that like none of that matters to the people who matter. Mm. Yep. And, um, (laughs) (laughs) what, uh, what the next question I want to ask you is, do you identify as a feminist? Oh yeah. 100%. (laughs) Yeah. And why, like, what, what is that about for you? Um, I think that feminism is about giving, uh, other women opportunities and options and supporting other women. And so one of the things that I do, like I said, is I, gen- I support families, but most oftentimes the support falls the most on the mother of the home. She feels like there's just one thing off of her plate. If I can ever help you know, another woman rise up. I speak at, I used to speak at like elementary schools and high schools about just like entrepreneurship, you know, being the author of your own life. Cause I think that the world will be changed by women. It really will. And if we empower women, we will change the world. And so I think feminism sometimes gets a bad rap, but I truly believe feminism is just about girl power, (laughs) supporting other women. And as opposed to creating an environment of cattiness and competition, it's an environment of collaboration and inclusivity. And that is how women will rise. For sure. I mean, it's so interesting. This question has been really kind of contentious on my, on my show. Really? um, Well, uh, not everyone is comfortable with the word, first of all, that's true. Yeah. Um, and it definitely tends to be, I've noticed American uh, women have a, a real, have, have a lot of baggage with the word and maybe not. You guys have had some, there's some history though. There's definitely some baggage mm, yeah. with feminism in the States, especially I would say. Yeah. I just don't find that so much with my British or Canadian guests and I mean, it doesn't hurt that you have a feminist president, really, don't you? 
Well, I was just going to say our prime minister is pretty fat. He like said mm-hmm. straight up, I'm a feminist. But I think that's the thing about feminism is it's not just about women. We have to bring men into this conversation too. So if men feel like they're being maligned and we're like, no, down with men, down with men, all with women, that's the wrong approach. It's about inclusivity all around. So the inclusivity isn't just about empowering and including women in the conversations, but empowering and including men in the conversation too, because they are half of the world. Uh, women will have men as children, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, we all have to be in it together or else it's just not going to work. Well, and what, what I love about male leaders who declare themselves feminists, like um, President Obama did and your, Ugh, your prime minister, I, love Obama. <laughs> well, I just love that because they are not saying one is better than the other. They're saying we support equality. I mean, that's really all they're saying. You know, we support exactly. equality. We, and, the, and the right to choose. I mean, I think you know, there's some people who say, well, feminism is about, you know, you got to go out there and get a job and climb the corporate ladder. Feminism is about choice. So if you want to stay home and raise your family and have, you know, six children, but you made that choice, you are, you have as much right to be a feminist as the lady who is Mm -hmm. working the nine to five climbing the corporate ladder. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Okay, cool. Well, last question, Bianca, what are you reading right now? What's on your nightstand? What am I reading right now? I'm reading the E-Myth Mastery. That's one of them, just the entrepreneurial myth, just mm-hmm. about entrepreneurship and some of the things you think. And again, about it not necessarily needing to be hard. You have to work smarter, not necessarily harder. And um, I also really love uh, Big Magic. Oh, so. yes. I just like wanted to go for another path at that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been reading that as well. That's that's cool. All right. So we'll uh we'll link to your uh your website and your information um on the show notes. And it's been such a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you for having me. That's it for our show today. Remember, if you need support to live your well woman life, head over to wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join us. Our monthly live event, Well Women Drinks, brings women together to share our successes and challenges as women, leaders, moms, aunts, sisters, and all the other roles we carry. If you'd like to attend a Well Women Drinks near you, or if there isn't one in your city yet and you'd like to start one, email info at wellwomanlife.com. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment and subscribe in iTunes and leave a review. This helps raise visibility, which is super helpful when it comes to producing the show every week. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening today, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Well Woman Life. I'm Giovanna Rossi for The Well Woman Show. Until next time, have a super powerful week.